the transition from the Ice Age into a warming world was truly transformative for humanity. In our last video, we focused on the early seeds of civilization being sown by this enormous climatic shift. The millennium of 9000 to 8000 BC served only to speed up these changes that had already begun. This era, often associated with the transition from the Mesolithic to the Neolithic in various regions, saw significant developments in human societies driven by climatic stability, technological innovation and social changes. Unlike the preceding millennium, which included the tail end of the Younger Dryas cold snap, the period from 9000 to 8000 BC benefited from a warmer, more stable climate that fostered new subsistence strategies and cultural practices. In this video, we will examine the major events and technological breakthroughs for humans during this time frame. This was a time where on each part of our planet, humans started diversifying greatly in our behaviours, creating new adaptations to take advantage of our surroundings and thrive. I will focus on each part of the world and the progress made in these areas. So, without any more preamble, let's get into it. By 9000 BC, the Earth was firmly in the Holocene, with the climatic fluctuations of the Younger Dryas behind it. The period from 9000 to 8000 BC saw continued warming, with temperatures stabilising and precipitation patterns supporting the growth of diverse ecosystems. In the Fertile Crescent, encompassing parts of modern-day Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israel and Turkey, fertile soils and reliable water sources nurtured wild cereals such as wheat and barley and legumes, creating ideal conditions for human exploitation. In Europe, rising sea levels reshaped coastlines, submerging low-lying areas and forming modern features like the Baltic Sea. In Asia, warming climates expanded forests and grasslands, while in the Americas, the extinction of the megafauna forced hunter-gatherers to target smaller game and plant resources. This stable climate was critical, as it provided predictable resources and encouraged experimentation with plant and animal management. The absence of major climatic disruptions during this millennium allowed human populations to focus on long-term strategies, setting the stage for the societal changes that were to come. In Europe, the Mesolithic period, broadly around 10,000 to 5,000 BC, saw hunter-gatherers adapt to post-glacial forests and coastlines. From 9,000 to 8,000 BC, Communities exploited diverse resources, remaining largely mobile but showing signs of semi-sedentism in resource-rich areas. Residents hunted deer, gathered hazelnuts and fished, using microlith-tipped arrows and bone tools. In the Balkans, Lipinski Veer in Serbia emerged by 8000 BC as a semi-permanent fishing village along the Danube. Trapezoidal houses and fish-shaped stone sculptures indicate cultural complexity and attachment to a place. In Scandinavia, the Ertebal culture, emerging around 8000 BC, relied on coastal resources, using nets, weirs and dugout canoes for fishing and seal hunting. Shell middens, like those at Skateholm in Sweden, reveal intensive marine exploration. Technologically, microliths dominated, forming composite tools for hunting and harvesting. Flint axes, used for woodworking, appear at sites like Vadbake in Denmark. The bow and arrow, likely preceding this millennium, 
now became widespread and was used for hunting and even warfare. Art such as rock engravings in Norway depicting animals reflects cultural continuity. Socially, burials with grave goods such as amber beads at Skateholm suggest emerging status differentiation. While agriculture was absent, intensive foraging laid the groundwork for later Neolithic adoption. In East Asia, particularly China, this period saw early experimentation with plant management and technological innovation. The Yangtze River Basin, with its fertile wetlands, supported wild rice. At Kwahukau in China, dated to around 8000 BC, phytoliths and charred rice grains indicate managed wild rice, a precursor to domestication. Residents used wooden spades and bone tools for cultivation, suggesting semi-sedentary practices near reliable water sources. Technological breakthroughs included early pottery, among the world's oldest. At Jianrendong Cave in China, pottery shards dated to around 8000 BC with simple cord mark designs were used for cooking and storage. This innovation, absent in the Middle East at this time, enhanced food processing and supported semi-sedentary life. Stone tools like grinding slabs at Pengushan processed nuts and seeds. Culturally, East Asian communities showed the beginnings of complexity. Burials at Jiho, later but rooted in this period, included turtle shells, possibly for divination. Socially, semi-permanent settlements employ cooperative labour, though hierarchies were minimal. These developments positioned East Asia as a secondary centre of agricultural origins, distinct from the Middle East. In South Asia, the site of Mergar shows significant development. By around 8000 BC, Mergar's inhabitants cultivated wild barley and wheat, with evidence of mud brick houses suggesting semi sedentism. Dental wear on human remains indicates grain processing, while storage pits point to surplus management. Early domestication of goats, likely influenced by Zagros practices, appears by early 8000 BC, evidenced by bone morphology. The main technologies found in this area are microliths and ground stone tools that supported harvesting and grinding. Bone tools like awls indicate hide processing. Culturally, shell beads and simple ornaments suggest aesthetic expression. While burials show minimal grave goods employing egalitarian social structures. Mergar's proximity to the Middle East facilitated cultural exchange, but its trajectory was shaped by local monsoon-driven ecosystems, distinguishing it from the fertile crescent models. In Africa, the Sahara, which at the time was a lush savanna due to stronger monsoons, supported vibrant human populations. In this period, Nab to Playa in Egypt was a key site, with seasonal camps near the Playa Lake. By 8000 BC, evidence of cattle management, possibly early domestication, appears in the form of young cattle bones, suggesting controlled herds. This marks one of the earliest instances of pastoralism, predating widespread agriculture in the region. Residents gathered wild sorghum and millets, using grinding stones and microliths. Pottery, among Africa's earliest, appears at Nab de Playa by 8000 BC, and was used for cooking. Stone circles and tumuli suggest ritual practices, possibly tied to seasonal gatherings. Socially, the need to manage herds implies cooperative strategies, though evidence of hierarchies is scarce. Sub-Saharan Africa, less studied for this period, likely saw mobile foraging, with sites like Unjugu 
showing wild millet use. In the Americas, the period followed the extinction of the megafauna, forcing hunter-gatherers to diversify. At this time period, communities in the Andes, Mesoamerica and North America intensified wild resource use, a precursor to later domestication. In the Andes, sites like Guitarero Cave in Peru yield evidence of wild bean and chili pepper collection by 8000 BC, alongside hunting of deer and camelids. Grinding stones indicate plant processing. In Mesoamerica, the Tehucan Valley in Mexico shows extensive gathering of avocados, squash and grasses, with seasonal camps suggesting mobility. North America's Great Basin saw hunter-gatherers exploit nuts and small game, using atlatls and microdits. Technologically, basketry and cordage, preserved in dry caves, supported storage and transport. Culturally, rock art in the southwest depicts hunting scenes, while burials with tools suggest spiritual beliefs. Socially, egalitarian bands predominated, with seasonal gatherings fostering exchange. In Australia, Aboriginal populations adapted to diverse ecosystems, from arid interiors to coastal zones. Rising sea levels separated Tasmania, shaping coastal economies. Sites like Purajara in central Australia show microlid use for hunting kangaroos and processing seeds. Coastal middens, such as those at Bribby Island, reveal shellfish and fish exploitation. Boomerangs and ground edge axes also enhanced hunting efficiency. Grinding stones processed wild grains like panicum, hinting at intensive plant use. Rock art at sites like Arnhem Land depicts animals and spirits, reflecting complex cosmologies. Kinship based groups maintained extensive trade networks, exchanging ochre and tools. Mobility, though, remains central, with no evidence of sedentism or agriculture. The period from 9000 to 8000 BC was a dynamic era of human adaptation, with the Middle East pioneering sedentism and agriculture, while regions outside Europe, East Asia, South Asia, Africa, the Americas and Australia developed sophisticated foraging, early plant and animal management and cultural systems. Europe's Mesolithic communities thrived on diverse resources. East Asia innovated with pottery and rice. South Asia paralleled Middle Eastern agriculture. Africa pioneered pastoralism. The Americas intensified foraging and Australia refined mobile economies. These regional variations show us the spirit of human resilience and creativity laying diverse foundations for later social complexity. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.